Good morning YouTube. It's uh, Saturday the 8th of February and I'm back in the woods. Well actually I'm still in the car as you can tell. I've just arrived at location. It takes about 20 minutes to get here from my house um, and today I'm going to take the tarp out and show you a few different things. I'll probably make a couple of little videos maybe of just um, a couple of knots and maybe a ridge line and a couple of tarp configurations that I set it up with. A um, couple of bits of devastating news. I say dev devastating in my world, it's completely irrelevant to the rest of you. Um, firstly, my camera still hasn't arrived. Everything's being filmed off the iPhone still, so apologies if it's rubbish. I tried to do a time lapse on the way here. It might be completely unusable. unusable. I'll say that again. I tried to do a time lapse when I got here. It, <laughs> I tried to do a time lapse on the way here. It might be completely unusable. I tried to do a time lapse. I tried to do a time lapse on the way here. It might be completely unusable. I don't know. <laughs> Guess we'll find out in the future edit. So just going to get on my stuff. I've got another piece of kit that I want to show you today as well, which is a like a little carabiner type thing that you use to hook on a ridge line. I think it's called a Night Eyes Figure 9, something like that. And I've got a new camera tripod for the camera that I don't yet have. So I'll probably look like a complete idiot walking up and down the woods with this massive tripod, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Oh, and actually, and the second piece of devastating news this week is that I got my Polish Levu back. Um, I sent it off to an alteration shop and they put a zip on it, a big marine 60 inch zip on it. Dead happy with it when I got it back. It looked awesome. They put some Velcro on it as well to keep the flap down. And then as I was inspe inspecting the rest of it, I noticed that one half of the Levu is actually inside out. So. I'm gonna have to take that back and get it redone. Uh, I've got another zip. When I bought it, it came in two, a pack of two. So hopefully I'll just be able to maybe get half of that zip and then put it around the other way and put the other half on, I don't know. I need to take it back to the shop and see what they say, but they've done an awesome job as well and I'll, I'd be gutted if they have to unpick it all. Uh, it's probably usable in the way it is, but I just want it to be right. So that's probably gonna go back. And it was only 15 quid, so bargain. So that's the second bit of devastating news means nothing to you lot, but hey-ho. Just spotted a random holly tree. The only one around here by the looks of it. Welcome back YouTube to Steelman Outdoors. Uh, a first thank you to everybody that watched last week's first video. Um, great response considering I didn't think anybody would watch it and special thank you to everybody that managed to drop a comment below. I tried to respond to every single one of them. In fact, I think I did. Some of them were absolutely lovely and I really appreciate everything that you did. I mean, I've watched thousands of videos over the course of how, however long I've been watching YouTube. And do you know what? I only comment every now and again, so the fact that some people took their time out to actually comment and say what they thought about my, my first video, thank you, and I hope you enjoy this one. So today, we're out looking at tarp configurations. So I didn't bring the Polish Levu, I probably told you about that in the car, why it's not here with me. Um, but I wanted to come out, dedicated, it's freezing cold. I say freezing, I'm probably just moaning a bit, it's only about eight degrees maybe. But you can probably tell from looking around that um, there's been quite a fair bit of wind in the past week and actually this spot that I was in last week has now got quite a lot of deadfall that's come down from the pine trees so um, done a little bit of cleaning up just behind me so that we've got a bit of a spare space to uh, to work with and I'm going to show you first of all how I tie a ridge line. So I'm going to demonstrate using these two trees in front of me and all I need for this ridge line that's just 550 paracord, I think. And a peg. Now, actually, you don't really need the peg. 
you could probably just use um, a branch, a stick, whatever. But I've got these in my bag anyway, so I might as well use that. Probably worth noting that on the end of my ridge line, I've just tied a, a simple loop. I think that was with a bowline knot. I'll show you how to do that in, in another episode. Episode? Video? And that's the first bit, so just tie that round a tree. I'll show you how that's done now. Take the loop. Pass it around the tree. Take the loop, pass the line through it, and put the peg in, or stick, and just cinch that down to the tree. That isn't going anywhere. Pull tight, go around the back of the tree. Pass the rope back over to make this triangle. And pinch here, make a half hitch. Pull that into the tree. And then through the loop that you've just made, Lock that off with another half hitch. This stick stops that from being pulled back through. Um, and then when you want to release, Pull, pull the stick out, then you're ready to go. Now, if you can't be bothered doing any knots, or you simply don't know any, you haven't learned any yet, or you simply can't be bothered, which let's face it, most of us are looking for shortcuts most of the time, I recommend this little gadget. So I just tried it out for the first time off camera. It's called the Night Eyes figure nine carabiner. Here's a little close up. I'll probably do some more shots of that in a minute. And this makes it really simple. So starting with the loop and the peg the same way, but this time, instead of tying the taut tarp hitch, I'll show you how simple it is with this new gadget. So come around the back of the tree like normal, pull that nice and tight. Put the carabiner on the ridge line and holding the working end, pass it through this first loop at the top. Now when you've got it there, tension the line so it's nice and tight. Then all you need to do, pinch, hold around the back, 
and pull around there and lock it off. Simple as that. How awesome is that? Great little gadget. Don't have to mess about with any kind of knots or remembering how a half witch hitch works or a taut tart hitch or a trucker's hitch. Nice and simple, four quid, light as anything. And that is super, super taut. And here's that again as a close up. The ridge line's just gone around the back of the tree. Here's my working end. Let's just clip the carabiner on, put the working end through this top loop here. And at this point, you need to really pull to get your tension. Then all you need to do is hold here. Oh. Then all you need to do is pass it underneath and lock it off. If you need more tension, unlock, pull the carabiner back and just go through that same process, locking it off. So the first configuration is a bit of a two for one really. I've got the ridge line strung up between these two trees like I showed you earlier with the new night eyes clip. Very, very simple. And all I've done is attach the tarp to these Prusik loops. Prusik? Prusik? Not sure. <laughs> um, I'll show how they're done in a, in a future video probably. But all I've done is I've attached them either side and self tensioning as you pull the knot away as it resists against the line, it doesn't pull back. So you can make this nice and taut. And all I've done at the back of the tarp is stake that down with two uh, tent pegs. You could use wood as well. Um, you could use sticks. And that is basically just become a basic lean-to. Now I can sit under here. I can get right at the back of here with a bivy bag and be out of the elements. Um, but the beauty of having it like this is that I very quickly can turn it into an A-frame tent just by pulling this side back over. So if I need more protection from the elements or the wind changes direction, and all I need to do is peg this side down and it becomes like a standard tent. So let's quickly do that for you. And there we have it, a basic A-frame tent. I've got that quite low to the floor, so it should stop most of the wind coming in. You can see there's an acre of space in there. Now I could quite easily get three people under there, if need be. You see that I've added these loops of shock cord to the edge of the tarp and they're on each pull out point.
Now, just for purposes of demonstration, I've only pegged down the four outer corners. But you could make this a lot stronger by pegging down all of the other reinforcement points and actually making a couple more attachments to the top of the ridge line. You can see here it's only attached at the two ends. Still got the Kenkos. Not as easy as it looks. <laughs> That's the, probably the worst feather stick I've ever seen in my life. Tag me if you've made a worse one. Got a question for you all actually. These trees that I'm in, clearly a pine tree, but let me just show you something behind me. It's a completely different colour. Um, I'm not sure if it's a redwood tree. Can somebody comment below and let me know if they know? It might just be a pine tree, just a different type. Is a redwood a pine tree? No idea, but check this out. So 
So just behind the tarp, some of you may have spotted it earlier, there's a few of these trees. Now they look just like normal pines, I think, but the bark on them, let's get a closer look. So let's compare it to, say, this one. Like a brown, rough bark. But these babies over here, Furry. Is it just dead? No, nope, it's not dead. It's still got green leaves on it. I wonder if they're some kind of redwood or just a different type of pine. Anybody know? I mean, that's not a pine. <laughs> What's that? An oak tree by the looks of it. Judging by the leaves on the floor. Oak leaves. It's a gnarly old tree that. Many, many years old. Let's have a look at the bottom of it. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm such a bugger. I wouldn't be surprised if I knock that over one day and there's flames everywhere. Probably should take some precautions. It appears that I'm quite clumsy. I'd love to stay here, probably got to wrap up soon, get home to the wife and kids. I really want to get back here to do a wild camp soon. But it's freezing! <laughs> I mean, I see people on YouTube in like minus 30 still camping outdoors <laughs> it's actually really nice at the moment but it, it got down it's been frosty all week for those of you in the uk that's like quite cold i suppose we've had a bit of a mild winter this year and it gets dark at about five o'clock Evenings are getting a bit lighter nowadays, which is great. But maybe when the clocks go forward, you get that extra hour in the evening, it'll be much better. Otherwise, I'm just going to be in my sleeping bag from like half five. It's going to be really rubbish viewing. So big shout out to you all for coming back. Really appreciate it. Um, 
don't know what I'm going to do next. Probably just more of this crap. So, <laughs> if you enjoyed it, if you enjoy this ugly mug, come back again, I guess. Thanks very much. Oh, my God.